Hello, I'm David Swan, Instructional Designer with the Faculty Success Center at Kalamazoo Valley Community College. And in this video, I'm going to discuss the importance of heading levels in Microsoft Word so far as the role that heading levels play in making a Microsoft Word document accessible. These heading levels play a crucial role in document accessibility on many different levels. One of the more crucial ways it plays a role in accessibility, that is heading levels, is providing the means for students with blindness and students with low levels of sight where they must rely on a screen reading app to read the document to them. They're able to navigate through the document in a way that is similar to a sighted person, where we can look at the headings and subheadings, scan the document and find what we want, or get a sense of what the document is about. And if we do not use heading levels, a screen reader will just read from the top to the bottom of the document. And the student using the screen reader will have to wait for that reading rather than jumping to the next heading level if they want. I'm going to start creating a, a document uh, and we're going to implement some, some heading levels. So the first level we have here is normal. You'll see right up here, it is a normal level. And we could use, we could call that body text, or we could call that paragraph text. It's just the, the regular text that you read. And ideally, we're going to make that text a 14 point font, as I discussed in a previous video. And I am going to paste some text in here, just so I could demonstrate how we would use heading levels to organize text. So obviously, this is just regular body text. It's marked as such. And then up here, I want to add a uh, heading above this text. So we're just going to call this heading level one. So I'm going to type this in heading level one. And this would be a main heading, not a title heading. A title heading would be something that would be like on a multi-page document where you just want the title in front. Then that heading would be, would be the title. Uh, in this case, we're beginning like a new section and we're going to make this heading level one, but obviously typing out the text and changing the size of the text where it's bigger doesn't make it technically a heading level one. We have to go into the heading level here under style. So in Microsoft Word, you're going to, you're going to be at your home tab and you're going to go into this area called styles and you're going to look for heading level one. I'm going to select that. So you've just made heading level one. And if you're on the same topic and you have a topic that's related to the above topic, it's slightly different, but you want it to be a different category, then we're starting to establish what we call a hierarchy of heading levels. So if this paragraph here is about something that's still under here, but it still needs to be its own topic, then we would make that a lower heading level. So I'm going to do a, a paragraph break here, and I'm going to type in heading level two. And obviously, we're going to go in here, and we're going to make that heading level two. And we could go even further. Why not add a heading level three? And just randomly, I will select a spot here. Let's say right here. We'll do a paragraph break here. And we'll make this, whoops. We'll make this heading level three. Whoop, three. And I will select that text and now here I'm going to have to expand this and there's heading level three. 
Now you'll you'll see that perhaps the default font choices from from Microsoft are not the best choice for us here, because really we want for our sighted students, like this would work for uh, students using a screen reader. They're not seeing this. They're relying on the screen reader to read it to them audibly. But our sighted students could get confused. We have a 14 point font here. Our heading level one is 16 points. So it's slightly bigger than this. And our heading level two is 13 points. Now it's smaller than our body text. And heading level three is 12 point, which is quite a bit smaller than our body text. And our heading levels need to be bigger than our body text. So let's start off at heading level three. And I'm gonna change the the size and styling of the font so that it's easily recognizable as a subheading by a sighted student or a sighted reader. So I'm gonna stick with Calibri, but I'm not gonna, they, they're using light. I don't wanna use that. I'm gonna use Calibri or Calibri. And I'm gonna increase the size to 16 and I'm gonna make it bold and I am gonna make it black. Um, and the reason why I'm gonna make it black is I wanna keep things, things simple for myself as the designer of this document. It is, it, it is obvious for a sighted student that this is a subheading. It doesn't need to be a different color. It's bolded, it's larger. And I'm avoiding some other potential accessibility issues if I start adding color. You can add color, but that's a different topic for a different video regarding contrast. So I've made this 16, and you want heading level two to be distinctively larger than heading level three. So I am going to uh, change this as well to regular Calibri. And I'm going to make this an 18 point font and I'm going to bold that. I'm going to make it black. And there you go. So this is distinctively larger than this, but you see there's a hierarchy. So anytime you have a, 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 a major topic with a heading level one, and then you want to organize the following related information into subtopics. We use associated subheadings. So finally, heading level three, I'm going to go even larger and I'm, I'm going to go for a 20 point font. You could go with 22 if you wanted. Let's do that. We'll make it 22 to make it very distinct. And again, I'm going with the regular Calibri. I'm gonna bold it. I'm gonna change the color to black. All right, now, one more thing I wanna share regarding all of this, and that is, is that if you're choosing a scheme um, or a, a style set, so that's what I've basically done. I, I'm going to create this document and I keep on writing this document, adding more to it. And I don't want to have to, every time I add a, a heading level three, two, or one, and have to change the styling every time. So you can change that up in here, in this area up here. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to, I want, for now on, every time I set text as a heading level one, I want it to be Calibri at 22 points, bolded. I'm gonna select the text of heading level one, what I want it to look like. And I'm going to go up into the styles and I'm gonna expand the menu so I can see there's heading level one. And then I'm gonna do a right click. Okay, and you see how I went back to the way it was. And I want to select update heading one to match selection. 
So I'm going to click on that. And if I expand this again, you'll see that heading level one looks just like that. And so from here on in, every time I add a, a heading level one in the document, it's going to take on that formatting. Let's just do it one more time with heading level two so we have a little bit of practice here. I'm going to select the text for this heading level two. And I am going to expand the menu up here under styles. And I'm going to put my, my cursor over heading level two and do a right click on my mouse. And then I'm going to select update heading two to match selection. Click on that. And now that's done. So these are both their different heading levels and I've changed the default styling. So for now on in this document, as I add heading levels, they will automatically have the formatting that I want. So now that we have the heading levels all set in our document, there's some other things that I want to review with you regarding the functionality of heading levels in your document. As has mentioned earlier in this video, we're talking about creating a document that is accessible to both students who rely on a screen reader to read the document to them and also doing so in a way that elevates accessibility for sighted students as well. So when you set heading levels, you're also including or generating language that marks those heading levels. And it doesn't just serve information to a screen reader, but it can also enhance the navigability of the document for sighted students. And one of the functionalities in Microsoft Word is you can open up a navigation pane here on the left that will display all the heading levels and their various levels and they'll be clickable. And that will allow students to click on a certain area in the document and they can jump right to that spot. So where you'll find that is here under view. I'm gonna click on that. And the navigation pane is right here, right here. So it's under the show menu. And so I'm going to turn on the navigation pane and you'll see that in the document that we've created, we have all three of the header levels that we have created in this document. And if, for example, this heading level happened to be buried further down in the document, let's say it is your one of your course syllabi, and you have a section on grading and a specific spot for grading scale and that was buried somewhere deep in the document as a heading three it would say grading scale here somewhere in the navigation pane the student could just find that and click on it and it would jump that heading right to the near the top of their view of the document instead of scrolling a long way to get to that point. So it's kind of similar to how it works for a student using a screen reader where they can quickly go through all the heading levels, scan them, and then click precisely where they want to go. So this is another way in which you enhance accessibility, not only for a student using a screen reader, but also for a sighted student as well. In review, Heading levels play a crucial role in accessibility for both our sighted and especially our students who have blindness or have low vision disabilities. And, and the heading levels provide information to the screen reading technologies they use so that they can navigate efficiently within the document. For example, if this was a syllabus, and they wanted to quickly find the grading information, like the grading scale, they could quickly tab through the heading levels until they reach grading scale, instead of having to read the entire document to get to that point. So structuring your heading levels, formatting them, setting them correctly throughout the document 
is essential in creating an accessible Microsoft Word document.